gentlemen, a big welcome to Bill Mitchell.
Mr. Francis. I now welcome Her Worship the Mayor of Christchurch, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell, to address the service. Ena mana, ena reo, e rau rangatira mā, tēne te mihi ki a koutou, i te kōpapro te rā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā tātou katoa. Veterans, young and old, servicemen and women of the New Zealand Defence Force, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests and everyone who has gathered to pay their respects on Anzac Day. It is my honour and privilege as the Mayor of Christchurch to welcome you all here this morning. For over 100 years, New Zealanders and Australians have gathered together to honour those who have fallen in the service of their nation and to acknowledge the virtues of service and sacrifice. Last year, we were not able to do so, and there are many, many parts of the world where this is still not possible. Australia and New Zealand again stand together as one in the world. As we honour all of those who have served our country over the past century, as well as those who serve on our behalf today, let us each and every one of us also commit to the peaceful resolution of conflict to truly honour the sacrifice that was made. Ka mo mahara tono tatu ki arato, we will remember them. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I now ask that the wreath bearers of the services, the corps and the units of all conflicts to now come forward and place your wreath along the front of the base of this stage. In placing these wreaths, we commemorate and remember the service and sacrifice of our military personnel in World War I, World War II, Korea, Malaya and Borneo, Vietnam and more recent campaigns and peacekeeping operations in Bosnia, the Solomon Islands, Timor Leste, Kuwait, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Please come forward and place your wreaths. Thank you. We will now sing God Save the Queen, accompanied by the New Zealand Army Band and our guest choirs. Mr. Francis, please call the parade to attention.
Mr. Francis, stand the parade at ease. I now invite Mr. Dennis Mardle, President of the Christchurch Memorial Return and Services Association, to deliver the ANZAC Remembrance. The word ANZAC encompasses Australian and New Zealand forces. Over many years, it has come to emphasise the friendship and bravery shared by these two countries in fighting to preserve the principles and freedoms that we hold so dear. Together, we have taken part in conflicts in many countries of the world, as well as on the oceans and in the air. In South Africa, Europe, the Middle East, Italy, the Pacific, Korea, Malaya and Vietnam, just to mention a few. More recently, we have been involved in United Nations peacekeeping activities in many theatres of conflict, including Bosnia, Timor-Leste, the Solomon Islands, Iraq and Afghanistan. Since the Boer War, many thousands of our young men and women have given their lives, and countless acts of bravery and heroism have been acknowledged and in many cases rewarded. This is the day when we remember these facts. In every country where Australians and New Zealanders live, they hold ANZAC services on the 25th of April each year to remember the sacrifices of others have made so that we can enjoy the principles and the freedoms that we have inherited. We will now sing the traditional Anzac hymn, Eternal Father Strong to Save, accompanied by the New Zealand Army Band and our guest choirs.
I invite the very Reverend Lawrence Kimberley to deliver today's lesson. Kia ora tauta, kia ora tātou katoa. The passage I'm about to read is from the Christian scriptures. We of course are gathered on this Anzac Day to remember the fallen, but the reason we do this is because after the world wars, the returning servicemen and women wanted the nation to make sure that such a conflict would never happen again and that we would find ways to resolve conflicts peacefully. Hence, when we remember them, we also commit ourselves to doing everything in our power to avoid the need to send young people away to war. Today, therefore, we pray for peace, and for peace to reign in our hearts, there needs to be love, love of our neighbour, love of ourselves, love of God, Love that leads to respecting the dignity of every person. The passage I will read speaks about what love is prepared to suffer, what love will willingly endure, the things that love will find itself able to give, in order that together we might experience the happiness that God intends. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing what is right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Here ends the reading. I now invite Lieutenant Commander Andrew Willett of the Royal Australian Navy, posted to Defence Force Advance Command in Wellington, to deliver the ANZAC dedication. As the grey shadows of dawn appeared over ANZAC Cove 106 years ago, the men of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps received their baptism of fire as they joined the fight for justice and freedom. It was then that the Anzac became one of the immortal names in history. And now, at this hour and this day, it is fitting that we should gather here to honour the memory of those who went to the battlefields of that war but did not return. We remember their comradeship, their steadfastness and their desire to serve their fellow men. It is fitting also that we remember those men and women who gave their lives to, in other conflicts in hope that their sacrifice might lead to a lasting peace. We desire to be worthy of their great deeds and once more dedicate our lives to the service of the ideals for which they died. As the dawn of this new day has conquered the night, so let their memory inspire us to work for the coming of the new light into the hearts of all people. 
We pray that their fight and their sacrifice may not have been in vain and that in due season their everlasting memorial may be peace on earth and goodwill among men. We will now sing the Australian National Anthem, Advance Australia Fair, accompanied by the New Zealand Army Band and our guest choirs. Mr Francis, call the parade to attention. to stand the parade at ease. Wreath bearers, I now call upon the official Anzac wreath to be placed on the Senate temporary cenotaph. On behalf of the Christchurch Memorial RSA, President Dennis Mardle and Vice President Craig Ruane, New Zealand Artillery. Together, on behalf of the Government and people of New Zealand, the Honourable Dr Megan Woods, Minister of Housing, Energy and Resources, Research and Science, and Associate Minister of Finance. Honourable Peter Williams, Minister of Police, Building Construction, Associate Minister of Children and Housing. Duncan Webb, MP for Christchurch Central, and Sarah Pallett, MP for Island. Lieutenant Commander Andrew Willett on behalf of the Government, Defence Force, Navy and the people of Australia. On behalf of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee and the ACT Party Caucus, Ms Tony Severin. Defence Force, Air Vice Marshal Andrew Clark, Warrant Officer Tony Tate, and Squadron Leader Karina Chipman. Representing the Royal New Zealand Navy, Commander Robin Lovisage, Royal New Zealand Navy Volunteer Reserve. Commander Martin Walker of the HMNZS Canterbury. 
and her crew and Zoe, Lieutenant Commander Zoe Brangman representing HMNZS Pegasus. Representing the 2nd 4th Battalion of the Royal New Zealand Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Tuatini and RSM Craig Winter. Wing Commander Brett Marshall, representing the Air Force Museum of New Zealand. Together, Mr. Kipros Kotsikas, Honorary Consul for the Republic of Cyprus, and Mr. Nicole Maka Balak, Honorary Consul of the Philippines.
Jack Stewart, the Consul of Malaya. Ms. Bologna, the Honourable Consul for Italy. I now invite Colonel Craig Ruane, Vice President of the Christchurch Memorial Return of Services Association to dedicate the wreaths. <coughs> With grateful thanks for their comradeship, we dedicate these wreaths to the memory of those who did not return. They trod the road of travail, long and steep, towards the crowning glory that is theirs. In tranquil peace and in his arms they sleep, their memory cherished through the passing years. Even today, the New Zealand Defence Force is protecting our borders this time from an invisible invader. Part of the Defence Force is the New Zealand Army. The land component of the New Zealand Defence Force and comprises around 7,000 personnel made up of regular force, territorial force and civilians. The New Zealand Army traces its history from a settler militia raised in 1845 and this year has been commemorating 175 years in New Zealand. The bywords they have been quoting have been service and sacrifice. Perfect words to ponder while we enjoy a musical interlude. The first item will be Pokari Kariana, a traditional Maori song written in 1914 and was used to farewell the 19th and 20th Maori pioneers reinforcements during World War I. It will be performed by the girl choruses of the Christchurch Cathedral Choir. The second item will be Bring Him Home, a universal prayer of home written by Herbert Kurtzimer and performed by the Christchurch Leader Tafel Male Choir.
Our third item will be Poppy and Bahutakawa. This poignant song based on a poem by Vietnam veteran Chris Mullane reflects on the influence of Flanders Field and had on shaping New Zealand as a nation. The music was composed by Dane Bloomfield and our very own bandmaster today, Staff Sergeant Dave Fiu. Performed today by the New Zealand Army Band and sung by Private Shanna Lee Eaches. I now invite the Reverend Father Dan Doyle and the Dean of Christchurch Cathedral, the very Reverend Lawrence Kimberley, to lead us in prayer. Let us pray for Aotearoa New Zealand and for the people of Australia who are represented here today, for all who suffer as a result of conflict, war, terror, and ask that God may grant us peace. God, our stronghold and defence, we pray for servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered and known to God. We remember especially this year young servicemen and women who have died in recent conflicts in the service of our nation and those who have returned bearing the physical and psychological scars of trauma. Hold close to your heart those who grieve. Be with those who love and support them, family, friends, colleagues, 
and use us as bearers of your love to support them in their loss. We pray for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day. We give thanks for those who are serving on our borders to keep our nation safe from the global pandemic. We remember their families and friends and all who pray for them. We pray for civilian women, children and men whose lives have been disfigured by war or terror and to bear the scars to this day. We pray for all those who are innocent victims. O oh God, we come to you pleading for peace, for an end to violence, for the cessation of war, that suffering may cease, that all peoples of the world may live in safety. And we pray that we may never again need send our young people away into war zones. Strengthen and uphold all those who are peacekeepers and peacemakers and who seek to keep this world secure and free. We pray for those who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for the gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God kindle in us the fire of love to bring us alive and give warmth to the world. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, and our universe. Amen. Amen. And now please join me, if you're able, in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. now stand in silence while we sound the last post. Recite Binion's lines, the ode to the fallen, observe a minute's silence and sound reveille. The last post and reveille will be played by Sergeant Kevin Hickman of the New Zealand Army Band. Binion's lines will be recited by Interayo by Mrs. Tao Sheehan, President of the Malayan Veterans Association in English by Colonel Rewayne. Vice President of the Christchurch Memorial RSA. Mr. Francis, call the parade to attention.
tēnā tātou katoa. E kore rātou e korohe ke tia, pēnei i a tātou ko mahu nei. E kore hoki rātou e ngoi kore, aha ko pēhea i ngā āhua tanga te wā. I te hekinga ātua te rā, tai noa ki te aranga mai te ata, ka mau mahara tonu tātou ki a rātou. Ka mau mahara tonu tātou ki a rātou. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. <clears throat> At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Mr. Francis, stand the parade at ease. I now invite the Reverend Father Dan Doyle to provide a blessing. Let us pray for God's blessing on us all. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all peoples, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God, the almighty Father, the Son and the Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We will now sing the New Zealand National Anthem. Mr. Francis called the parade to attention.
Mr. Francis, stand the parade at ease. Mr. Francis, please dismiss the parade. <laughs> As the parade is dismissed, I now invite community groups and individuals to come forward and place your own personal tributes on the temporary cenotaph. On behalf of the Christchurch Memorial RSA, we wish to thank everyone for their respectful attendance at today's parade and wish to give special thanks to the New Zealand Defence Force and the New Zealand Army Band, Christchurch City Council, the New Zealand Police, St John, the very Reverend Lawrence Kimberley and the Reverend Father Dan Doyle. Our guest choirs, girl choruses of Christchurch Cathedral and the Christchurch Leader Tarpal Male Choir. The Richmond Club on Stanmore Road is now open and will be serving breakfast and other refreshment for those of you who may wish to join and continue to remember them. Everyone, please travel well, take care, and above all, stay safe, and see you all next year. Done.